The purpose of this video is to think about friction, the physics behind friction. Um, think about maybe what causes it, what would influence it to be greater or less, and also generate some data that you can study. Um, so before we get into friction, I want to think about what's present um, when this object is just sitting here. So this is a lightweight plastic tray um, with two kilograms of mass in it. So it's, it's pretty heavy. It's got a good bit of mass, which means its weight, the pull of gravity on it downward, is a decent amount, okay? Um, if I were to put this on my hand, I can feel gravity pushing this into my hand. And that same thing happens when it's on the surface. So gravity um, is pushing this object uh, into the surface, and the surface is responding with an upward normal force. Um, we think of that as being produced by that interaction, right? Gravity's compressing that surface, the surface is pushing back. Um, so right now we've got um, two kilograms of mass. That would be roughly 20 newtons of force downward um, if you use 10 meters per second per second as your uh, value for acceleration due to gravity. So roughly 20 newtons downward, 20 newtons up. Um, right now there's no friction acting on this object um, because there's no lateral forces on this thing. Um, however, if I come along and try to move it, I can pull it. I'm actually pulling it right now lightly, and it's not moving. So right now, it's got to pull this way. If it's not accelerating, it's not even moving, there must be a force resisting it. And it's this interaction between the surface um, of the table and the bottom of the object that's pr providing some friction. In this case, if it's not moving, we call it static friction. Um, and we'll want to be able to differentiate static friction from kinetic friction, which is the friction present when something is sliding past one another. Um, the main reason we differentiate them is we, when we start to measure them, we'll see that there's a difference. I just want to show you and demonstrate static friction for a moment. I've got a force sensor here, and I'm going to hook it up um, to the tray. And I'm pulling right now. You can re see that the force is no longer zero. If I stop pulling, it goes back to zero. I can pull a little bit and it doesn't move, but eventually if I pull hard enough, it starts to slide. Okay, So that's kind of one of the interesting things about static friction, is static friction responds to what's going on with the object. So if I can pull with about one newton of force, there must be about one newton of static friction balancing it. Otherwise, it would accelerate, right? If this was a frictionless surface, I could pull with 0.1 newtons of force, and it would accelerate. But I can't, so there's got to be this interaction between the surface and the object that we call static friction. Now, what I want to do is measure that static friction. There must be some maximum at which the static friction can't get any bigger, right? Eventually, I'm able to accelerate it and then move it, right? So I'm going to actually measure force versus time from the force sensor and see if I can say something about both static friction and kinetic friction. Now one other thing I'm going to try to do as I pull this, once I get it moving, I'm going to try to slide it at steady speed. Okay. In other words, I'm not speeding it up, I'm not accelerating it. So if it's sliding at steady speed and not accelerating, again there's a certain amount of force pulling it but if it's not accelerating, that frictional force must be balancing my pull. So in a roundabout way, I get to actually measure the amount of friction through the force sensor. So let's see what that looks like. Again, what I'm going to try to do is just pull it gently. Once it starts moving, I want to try to pull it at steady speed. Okay, so let's look at our graph. There really wasn't any force until I started to pull. It shot up to a maximum. That would be when it actually broke free and started moving. So my static friction maximum is up here around 8 newtons. My kinetic friction amount, the, the amount of force present when I was pulling it with steady speed, is kind of bouncing around 6 newtons or so.
Um, at the end, I think I kind of stopped pulling it, so I'm not so sure the last bit of data here is great. But as I was pulling it steadily, it was hovering around six uh, newtons of kinetic friction. So I want to look at what would happen to that if I decreased the weight, the mass and the weight of the object. So I'm going to take out one of the 1,000 gram masses and I'm going to put in a 500 gram mass. So now if you think about what I'm doing here, I'm decreasing the weight, the pull of gravity on the sled, on this object. Um, so there's less gravitational force downward and thus less normal force upward. And again, normal force is created by the interaction of those two surfaces pushing together. Um, so if I decrease the normal force, things should slide a little bit easier, right? So that's what I'm hoping to see when I gather some data in this next run. Let's see what it looks like. I need to make sure that I save the latest run. So let's look at that graph. It's not too pretty, but I do see the general gist of what I was expecting. The static friction maximum peak is somewhat less, closer to seven newtons of force than eight. Again, the average here, the average kinetic friction when I was pulling it, it was about around six newtons before. Now it's a little over four. Okay. Again, there are peaks and valleys. That's partially just because I can't pull this with steady speed with a whole lot of accuracy. I'm doing my best. But we're trying to get just a general feel for the data. So let's lighten up the load again. Now I've gone to just a thousand grams of mass in the sled. And I want to see what that looks like. Again, the idea would be less gravitational force pushing into the surface less normal force upward, so we would expect the objects to slide with a little bit less friction. Okay, I do want to go back and undo that run. because I wanted to save the second run. Here we go. I want to store that run so I can compare it to this run. So again, this was with 2,000 grams in red. Uh, this was 1,500 grams. Now I want to look at just 1,000 grams inside. Try it again. Okay, that was a pretty smooth run. This time, notice the peak is less, so the static friction maximum is less. The roughly consistent kinetic friction is also less, okay? As expected, because I had less mass in the tray. Let's go down to just 500 grams of mass and see what that looks like. Again, less gravitational pull, less interaction between the object and the surface, less normal force should slide a little bit easier. There we go. In orange, my peak is less, my kinetic friction is less. And the thing that you might start to notice, the sled has a little bit of mass, about 20 grams of mass. So when I go from 500 grams to 1,000 grams to 1,500 to 2,000 grams, especially with this kinetic friction average, you can see it looks fairly proportional. Okay, It's pretty much an equal amount of jump each time. Um, it's probably harder to see in the static friction peak, but you can clearly see that as the mass was bigger, that static friction peak was bigger. If I wanted to gather data, if I wanted to look at kind of the part that was the um, kinetic friction average, I could highlight that region and use the stat button. 
and I would want to look at the mean force while it was moving with steady speed. The run with 2,000 grams, the mean is about 5.8. It jumps down to about 4.2 for the 1,500 gram run. The 1,000 gram run is just under 3 newtons while being pulled at steady speed. And the 500 gram mean is right about 1.5 newtons. So we can see that clear decrease, and we could actually pull some numbers from that data set. I will say the static friction maximum is a little bit tougher to get a read on sometimes, but we could use the examine tool here to try to get those values. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So this is the examine tool. This is at the peak of the first run. That would be the static friction maximum when there was 2,000 grams of mass in the sled. It was 7.7 .7 newtons. That's the red value. If I slide over to the blue value, this one I suspect might be a little bit high. But it's telling me uh, 6.9 newtons of static friction maximum. For the green run here, that was with 1,000 grams of mass it looks like the maximum is right at about 4 newtons and then the static friction maximum for that last run was around 2.3 if I wanted to get better data I would want to repeat this many times and take an average of each run but you could go ahead with this data set and try to do some plots you want to compare how the static friction maximum compares to normal force and how the kinetic friction amount compares to normal force in each case I'll share some data that you can use to do that analysis on your own if you'd like.